Oh, it's time for class. Class is in session! Roll call! Bueller. I'm gonna be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? I'm late for class. You are mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblet to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Welcome to Middle Class Film Class. I'm your host for today, Pete. I'm Tyler. And I'm Joseph. And today we are reviewing my pick from the Wheel of Destiny, Windy City Heat. This is a fan-made trailer. Here my name is Stella Stone yeah. Fury. This is my town, Chi-Town, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> the land of big hearts, big shoulders, and broken dreams. Explain this again. Red Bat is the wooden bat. Don't hit Perry. Don't hit the money. You, you, you'd hurt his, you'd hurt don't his hit bat the if you money. smack in the head with that. You didn't even give me a room, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dan. What? Where's Perry? Right here, goddammit. Open the fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> You're reading for the role of Stone Fury. I'll tell you a little about Stone. He's a he's a, a hard drinking, hard talking, hard living, tough guy. <laughs> oh God, that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Barry. Windy City. My last name with a K. What a bunch of fucking morons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A very minimalist uh, trailer there for the for Windy City Heat. I don't know if there was actually an actual trailer for the movie. Every every clip that I'd seen promoting it was promoting like as if it was a Comedy Central cart like a like an episode or something. Uh, <clears throat> so it was like Comedy Central presents here at eight thirty Windy City Heat. So yeah, Winnie City Heat, this is my pick from the Wheel of Destiny. This is starring Tony Barbieri as Mole, Don Barris as himself, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel, who is a very small small role, and of course the star of the show, Perry Caravello, aka Scary Perry, yeah. as Stone Fury. Yeah. And uh, this is a, I don't know, like a spiritual predecessor to something like Borat or, <laughs> I don't know, Jury Duty, Yeah. where it's like... Everybody is in on the production except for Perry. Mm -hmm. And um, right. so this is directed by Bob Cow Goldthwait, uh, who a lot of people only know him as an actor, but he's got a, a pretty accomplished directing background. Oh, really? He directed Shakes the Clown in 1991, <clears throat> did a bunch of basically the entire series of Crank Yankers, 42 episodes of The Man Show, six mm -hmm. episodes of The Chappelle Show, this Sleeping Dogs Lie, which is has the most bizarre premise. Do you guys know what the premise of that movie is? No, I've never <laughs> heard of it. Um, if you have de delicate sensibilities, fast forward 30 seconds, but, uh, the, the premise of sleeping dogs lie is, um, a man walks in on his girlfriend blowing their dog Ooh. and the rest of the movie is the fallout that happens from that. And I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and did her me a route. <laughs> world's greatest dad start with uh, Robin Williams. I've seen that. <clears throat> God bless America, Willow Creek, and then a bunch of other stuff, you know, more recently, but so he's he's an accomplished com comedic director, and he plays a director of the fake movie in this actual movie. Mm -hmm. If you go on uh, on IMDb, this is called a TV movie because it's produced by Comedy Central <laughs> and never had a theatrical release. And this is Comedy Central Films that did South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut was their first one, and this was their second movie. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so very short run. They had like drawn together the movie. They had a drawn together movie. Nine one one, the movie Strangers with Candy, the movie. Yeah. Hmm. It's like their own properties that they spun yeah. off into something else. Yeah. <clears throat> but this one particularly was also produced with Jack Hole Productions, which was like Johnny Knoxville and all those assholes. Oh. So that's the, kind of the long and short of it. The reason I picked this from the wheel or to put on the wheel is that uh, I don't think anybody knows about it, and I've heard about it. And I've seen clips from it, and I thought it was yeah. a great concept. And the character I think is hilarious. <laughs> the <laughs> real person, <laughs> yeah, the real person, and we'll get into that later. But uh, just this idea of just fucking with one of your friends on this ultimate level is so funny to me. Like yeah. the idea of making this 
There used to be a... Um, it's like <clears throat> this elaborate scheme. There was this uh, show on a- a- ABC or CBS or something like that that was... Maybe, what would you do? Oh, it was the WB. No, it was the WB <clears throat> where they... Uh, they It was like a star search for American Idol, mm. but they picked the worst contestants, so they bury bad singers and convince them that they are winning. Oh, and they sent home all the good singers and they kept the bad ones and they like they did all the bad, worst things you're supposed to do. Interesting. Is they said, oh yeah, practice with the headphones from the real song on so they can't hear themselves mm. singing. Oh, no. <clears throat> and then it was basically the whole, they would put them on a full live performance for the whole show <clears throat> and watch these terrible singers giving it their all. And it, it, it was such a mean spirited show because yeah. by the end of it, you're like, hey, you're the biggest loser. And then they revealed that the show was actually about bad singers. Oh. So is the, is the goal to be the worst singer? They think the goal is to be the best no, singer. No, but like the premise, how they chose the winner. They would, they would vote along the worst people to the next uh, round. Okay. So at some point, a girl gives a pretty good performance and and she's like, I really gave him my all. And so they... And they kick her off for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow, um, that's some fucking... Yeah. Messing with your head. It's, <laughs> a, it's a, the, on and the level... ego. Yeah, it's on the level of the swan, that reality show where they would give these ugly women uh, oh, yeah. makeovers and then makeovers, reveal yeah. them to their family and friends oh. six months later. Yeah. yeah. Terrible, terrible, terrible filming. Yeah. A terrible television. So this is in that vein. Is this okay to make fun of Perry for this? <laughs> I don't know, but it was fucking hilarious. So <laughs> yeah. let's give some initial reactions. All, all of our first watches. Yes. Tyler, give us your reaction to Windy City Heat. Before you say anything, Tyler, adjust your mic. It's covering your face. Oh, my apologies. Well, he's got, he got to be on. He's got to be on the mic, though. No, no, but he, yeah. the, the, the way it's positioned is like the arm is right in his face. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, so I wrote a letterbox review on it. Oh, hello. Come along, won't you? As Tyler reads his own letterboxed reviews. This is me, myself, and Tyler. All right. Okay. Very good. Let's so hear it. It goes like this. this. This film is very funny and well acted. The writing and timing and gags are comedic gold. Although they want us to think that Perry is being pranked the whole time, there's tells that he is in on it. I don't mind that he is in on it because the way he acts is completely believable. I think in the very beginning he thought it was real, but... When the hijinks started, he rolled along with it. I would definitely watch this movie again, and I don't think there was a better time watching this movie feeling slightly tired on a rainy day with a bowl of pasta and a glass of cranberry juice to have a good hearty laugh. Pasta for breakfast. (laughs) Would 100% recommend. The ending lulled a little bit, but not too much. If you can suspend your disbelief and think that this guy is ignorant to the joke, it makes it very funny. Solid A-. minus. And I gave it uh, three and a half stars. What the All heck? right. You don't think so? You don't think Perry's yeah. in on it? So you think he knows that it's a joke? Oh yeah, yeah, he does. There's no, there's no, there is absolutely no way that you wouldn't suspect. Like I mean, that like I said in the review, like in the beginning, he where, prob- where's where does it turn though? For yeah, where did it you turns think? when it starts getting when things start getting more be, extreme, be like more specific, when, like with the characters in the. <laughs> who are involved with the prank and plus come on you have to be self-aware that one you're not going to be a, you're not going to be a star like well, we like, just got done talking about that show where throngs of people thought they were great singers and they're winning this competition yeah have but, you ever watched american idol yeah i have you heard those terrible singers that think they're there they say i'm here to be a star i think i have what it takes yeah but this is a little bit different because it's on set and like the director guy he's like wearing like the classic like 30s like director pants and stuff and he's talking <laughs> through a micro like a megaphone yeah, like the whole time ign- ignorant to <clears throat> he's to not, that world i no, he isn't he, he because he has done comedy i read on imdb on the trivia that he admitted that he knew what was happening, but he just rolled with it because he thought it was so funny. Wouldn't you? It, would, I, wouldn't you say that in retrospect, having to try to avoid the ridicule? No, I don't think. I don't think there would be any ridicule involved. It was just. It, it, it just the, the timing of the gags were just. It was too perfect for someone to not be aware of their uh, the, be self aware of the situation that they've been put in. Do you like, think that Tommy Wiseau knew that he was making a bad movie when he made it? No, no. There, he thought it was legitimately that, great. No, no. There's def- and then and then when the reviews came out and everyone was laughing and he was pissed off about it. He, and then he leaned in on it. And then he said, "Oh yeah. no, it was supposed to be a, a comedy." Yeah, because he yeah because he leaned in. 
Oh, he did say that? I didn't I didn't hear about that. Yeah, I, he, he changed the narrative on it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I thought he was in on it, regardless of the fact that whether he was or wasn't in on it, like I was dying. Like that was <laughs> such a funny, funny movie. I hadn't like I was howling. Oh good. So yeah, great, great, great stuff, Pete. Great stuff. Oh good. Okay, cool. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Joseph, what's your take on Windy City Heat? There isn't much to be said other than I thought it was really funny mm-hmm. and like the nature of this elaborate and very in-depth prank that they're pulling on this one guy <laughs> who is so gullible. I think that he is, He, I think he is, I don't want to infer anything, but of someone of that nature who wears the same outfit all the time where's the same, has to have that specific kind of hat has to have that specific kind of jacket has a very specific idea of the type of life that a star has and what a star a quote-unquote star does yeah is they're cut from a certain cloth <laughs> that they're they're they are a unique human yeah perry is unique is a unique human and oh yeah i I don't think that he was aware of what was going on at all. Yeah. I th- really? I th- I think because... You his, don't think it was an act? No, I think that is just him. That's just who he is. And the reactions that he would... <clears throat> when he got really irritated <laughs> or upset... He started screaming. I don't, I don't think you can <laughs> pretend to do that. I don't think you can act his voice, that. His screaming would go high. I don't, <laughs> when it goes to the top register... <laughs> Because he the the way he speaks, he has this raspy, whispery <laughs> voice that he doesn't get loud. He just he's he's like a debark dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it, it lacks the diaphragm. Jesus Christ! Jesus. And yeah, when he gets really, really agitated, and it, it's it's interesting how, what the things that he does get mad at. <laughs> what, what, yeah, when he starts screaming. It, yeah, at certain things, but not others, where it's like, why didn't you get, why, where was the big reaction for that? But you had this big reaction for this other thing that was much smaller comparatively. I think when he got hit in the face of the basketball, yes. he barely reacts. Yeah. <laughs> and they did the slow-mo. Yeah. I, I think they just knew how to grind his gears, obviously, and I, I knew how to get under his skin. It felt... There's a, I think there, it might have been a little exploitative. Oh, for sure. For the joke, right? Yeah. For the joke of, of bugging with this guy. But it is really funny. <laughs> is it, <laughs> is it ultimately harmless though? Cause that's like a good prank, right? A good, a good prank is harmless in yeah. nature. Yeah. And do you think he suffered because of this? Besides the I don't fucking know. with him? Because I, because I saw a little bit more extra footage of him watching. Him watching this movie. Yeah. And he was laughing along. <clears throat> and he was like, he had no reaction to the reveal that it was not real. Yeah. And did you watch that, uh, Tyler? Yeah. The after yeah. of him him watching the movie after it came out on DVD. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I thought I thought I I, I don't know. Like he he had a couple of laughs in there and I I think I think he took it in t- spirit. Like if that happened to me, if you guys just, did just that. Just a to, yes or no. If you guys <laughs> If you guys did that to me, I would, I, I might have a heart attack from laughing too hard. <laughs> yeah, I just think, I, I still think that he was not aware of what was going on, even after watching it. <clears throat> he is, so you, so you don't think he was in on it? At that time, no. Hmm. I don't think, even after watching the movie that he we just finished watching, mm-hmm. after he watches it, I still think that he was like, because the movie doesn't portray it as a prank. Mm-hmm. Other right. than the very beginning, the, the little text on screen yeah. saying yeah. everyone's in on it except for Perry. It looks like they are making a movie, but they, and it looks like they're just like, it doesn't see, it doesn't say, it's not like Ashton Kutcher. Like, okay, we set up yeah. this table full of food and we're going to say this guy, Mr. Takahashi Nagasaki or whatever. <laughs> oh, and yeah. Hiroshima Nagasaki. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to come in and he's going to, they don't like explain it. They don't set up the joke. It's just like they're filming a documentary about the making of this movie. Mm-hmm. That's right. what, it, yeah. of this fake movie. Which I want to see the real movie. I know. We only see scenes of it. Yeah. Because those scenes were so funny. <laughs> Some of the funniest stuff in the movie comes from the fake movie. Yeah. <laughs> he plays the drum. Drumsticks. What does he say? <laughs> Stick and stones. Yes. Yeah, sticks, sticks and stones, stones can break my bones. <laughs> and like the, the whole end of the movie is like, he's like, my hometown. Chicago, Chai Town, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> and the way he delivers the lines are 
really funny because he can't act, but it's yeah. <laughs> But yeah, compares I, himself to Marlon Brando. But yeah, I oh yeah, only one other person has done this. It was Marlon Brando. <laughs> that sounds like something Trump would say. <laughs> but yeah, he has like the the, the clown hair. Yeah, and yeah. his homo- his homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fun. God, it was um, it was a very funny movie. It's I can see how it would be how they could turn it into a show. Yeah. Almost like an idiot abroad. They tried, yeah. they'd made a podcast called The Big Three, and it was a lot of the same sort of this. It's <laughs> let's try to have a show, but then we're constantly fucking with our friend to get the craziest reaction about it. Yeah. They're, they're not trying to get to the next story. They're just riding out the wave of K- Perry screaming his head off over whatever. <laughs> they're just trying to slight. irritate him the whole time. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I goes with Tyler. I was going to say, yeah. the difference with us is that I don't, <laughs> I want to get to the next story. <laughs> I want it. I want us to, I don't want to get derailed. <laughs> but yeah, it was very entertaining. Nice. Cool. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Windy City Heat, it's fucking hilarious. It's yeah. very funny. It's, just, it's so funny. Like, it's so I, funny. Like I can just, like now, I have something in the bank of my head to think about when I need a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, him, him screaming when they like dogpile him, which is a very like juvenile thing. I remember, uh, you know, in in high school, when you were trying to piss off one of your buddies, mm-hmm. yeah. and he's like, Kevin, we'd be playing video games at Kevin's house, and we'd be just sitting on the couch upstairs in his room, and he'd be playing video games, and like, two or three of us would just dogpile on top of him while mm-hmm. he's in the middle of like, the boss. He was just trying to fight. Hey, get the, get the fuck off me! Get off me! What are you doing? Get off me! And we're like, what is this bothering you? And you're just like laying on top yeah. of your friend. It reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. But they're just picking the one guy they know is going to get the biggest reaction out of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's their comedy gold. He's their wild card. Yeah. Oh. Um, we all have a friend like that. Yes, we do. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, whose friend is that? Um, <laughs> and it's like, there were definitely moments where I was comparing Perry to Tyler. <laughs> Especially the homophobia part. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's not a one-to-one comparison, Tyler, I will say, because you have, you blame a lot of your bad memory or your inability to grasp basic concepts in the English language. You, you blame that on your mono, I, right? Your mono suffrage, right? Uh, I, so I tell mean, us, tell I, us about your bout with mono. This is, this is relevant. Th- th- how is this relevant? It's, trust me, it's relevant. Tyler <laughs> tells all. <laughs> I've already explained it on the show the to ju- you off and on air. Uh, uh, Fred Gwynn playing the judge in in My Cousin Vinny. This better be going somewhere, counselor. Yeah, yeah, it should be. It Tell should me. be. Uh, what happened? The people who are new to the show. You mean, what do you mean what happened? I, I, I caught mono and then I suffered uh, very greatly from it. You lost years of your memory, right? I did. I was, I, he's like, I that, did? Is that a question? <laughs> I did. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> So five months I was infirmed. <laughs> oh, damn, five months. That's crazy. Yes. So this is the intro on Perry Caravello's Wikipedia page. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. Early life. He was born in Chicago, suburbs. Chi Town. Park Ridge, Chi Town, my town. Uh, hometown. City of big shoulders and broken dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he moved to his family to Southern California in 1974. And five years later, three weeks after getting his driver's license, he was injured in a car accident that put him in a coma for three weeks. Wow. Wow. As a result of the accident, Caravello suffered brain trauma. Oh. Is it all making sense now? <laughs> is it all coming together? <laughs> what is? <laughs> now I'm really depressed. <laughs> <clears throat> so, when you're watching a movie like this, is it okay to laugh at your friend that has brain trauma? <laughs> because it's funny. <laughs> I, I think Yes. I do too. I, I mean, think yes, because, I, because because it's not cruel. Like it's not. It's eh, that's arguable. What they're doing to, to Perry is, in essence, cruel. They're literally fucking with him for no reason than just to get him pissed off. Yeah, sure. And, and to make themselves laugh. Yeah, and there's a number of like scenes in the movie <laughs> where he goes undergoes physical trauma, like getting the basketball to the face. <laughs> yeah, but it's like with Jackass, that's funny too. Yeah, but they're all aware. But they're all aware of it. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Perry's not so. But then again, there's the line he says, I'll do anything to be a star. Anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More star than an actor. And then they just they just pounce on him like wolves. <laughs> yeah, I mean... They're like, oh, really? Okay. Does, is the fact that he's unaware of it, if he was aware of it, he would be okay with it. That's yeah. where I come down on it. If this is going to make me famous, I don't care. He's wearing like a giant baby outfit in one of his like... Just the tiny whities. Yeah. yeah. In one of his like, what's it called? It's like 
portfolio video. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when you're watching something like Dumb and Dumber, are those guys mentally, d- developmentally stunted? Yeah. Or are they just dumb? Where's the line? Oh, is it okay yeah. to make fun of the dumb people, but it's not okay to make fun of like physically, mentally handicapped people? Well, where's the line? Uh, and I, where's Perry in that line is what I want to know. So what I think, well, first of all, I think Perry was very much aware of what was going on. Not in the beginning, but in towards, no way. towards production, I think he it's more started, of a hypothetical question, Tyler, but... Oh, well, <laughs> where does it fall in the line? I don't know. I think Hypo- it, it's a hypothetical question. Yes, I know. That's why I'm, I'm answering it. I, I, <laughs> I think Are you a rhetorical question. I think um, rhetorical, hypothetical. Yeah, whatever. Well, think, hypothetical is an answer. Rhetorical, you don't expect an answer. Yeah, okay. Well, shame on me then. Okay. Well, I will give you an answer and I'll say that I think <laughs> that it's all dependent on like the relationship between the prankster and the pranky. Yeah. And if they're, if, if it's not like a YouTuber that just stumbled across, pr- across Perry. Right, because obviously I did a little bit of research on that crew and they all hang out. Like they're all part of the... They've like, been in a group together for for decades. Like yeah. they all know each other. <clears throat> they've, yes. been, they've been performing since 1988 together. Well, it says like they, we've been fucking with Perry for 11 years. Yeah, so he... So it's... it's I, I don't think it's lost. I don't <clears throat> think it's lost on him to know like that they would create an elaborate scheme to fuck with him sure. on this kind of grand scale. So that's where I fall down. On, is it okay to laugh at this? I think, yes, I think it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Perry has, since the movie has been released and really nothing happened with his career, he's spun it off into this clown like Twitch stream. Carrie, oh, really? Carrie yeah. Paravello Live. Mm-hmm. And he does Twitch streams like three, four days a week. Mm. And it's just, and it's him in the same apartment. Really? From he does the viewing party. Oh my God. It's clearly the same place. And you're just like. <laughs> same cupboards and same. Yep, same. Oh my <laughs> Lord. And, here, and you just see him. He's like just reading. Oh, you, they have something. 20 to, years later. And then they have Twitch streamers that their whole kind of bit is that they're playing video games while people insult them. Have yeah. you seen those? Yeah. What? Yeah. No. There's a, yeah. There's a streamer called Queso. Queso. Queso yeah. is the big one. Yeah. yeah. And he's he's a pretty big redheaded guy. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he just he'll someone will send him a message and it'll just say something to do with weight. Yeah, usually. some a, yeah. Fat, a fat joke and yeah. it's Kendrick L- Lamour food or something yeah. like that. And you're like, he'll stop and read it and yell about it how it's disrespectful. Or he'll be like, oh, you're don't, banned. Please don't eat my family. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're banned. Yeah, get uh, this guy out of here. Chat, we got our first ban of the night, and then he'll ban quote unquote ban him. But the to get the message read. You have to spend like five bucks to get it read on the sh- on the mm-hmm. on the right. Twitch stream. Yeah, he's making a lot of money. Perry's doing the same thing where people will write in and ask him, "Will you shave your chest live on the show?" And he's like, "I will not. <laughs> I'll never do that again." Because that's how I'll never do it again. Because that's how him and Don Barris met. <laughs> Don was running open mic at a comedy club, and Perry was an open micer. Mm-hmm. And Don said, "I'll, I'll bet you a hundred bucks you can't shave, take your shirt off, and shave your chest dry, no water, no nothing, on stage." And that's how they became friends. Oh, oh did he do it? God. Yeah, he did it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's yeah, a hundred bucks, man. They go that went a long way back in then. Yeah. Anyways, I also don't not I do not think that he was even aware of what the joke was. Not not only during the filming, but when we when we watched the viewing party after the fact, mm-hmm. if you if any of the three of us, Joseph excluded because he knows a lot more about how productions happen. <clears throat> but if you like me or you were to go on a, a, sh- yeah. a set. And they, we spend three days shooting, like, uh, maybe 20 scenes. They'd only show, like, four, yeah, but yeah. I'm assuming there's more. So maybe, like, 10 scenes, 20 scenes or something like that. Yeah. Is that enough to make a feature film? We would know, no, right? I feel like I feel like we're a little bit more aware of yeah, it. Yeah, we would we but, would know. We would say, well, that's all that's all my scenes. I'm the star, and there's 20 scenes, 15 <laughs> scenes with me in it. Yeah, and we're done in three days. Don't shoots take like months or something? Yeah. He has no self awareness for that. And then when you're when if you were to shoot it and you say, oh, it's a minimalist thing. The hero's only in it for a, a small part of it. Okay, that's great. You're expecting where's my 90 minute movie that's made out of the footage we shot, mm-hmm. and your friends come who are producers of the of the movie, and they put the disc on. And there's no 90 minute movie. It's a behind the scenes making of the movie. <laughs> yeah. You would go, where's the movie though? Weren't we going to watch the movie? <laughs> Not the behind the scenes. <laughs> you would, these are all normal things that you would react to you with know, a, a person with the sound of like mind and, and sound heart watching this thing. But P- Perry doesn't. He's just so excited that he's on a, on a movie. Yeah. Well, even though he doesn't even realize that it's, this is not a 90 minute narrative movie. 
<laughs> about a sports detective from Chicago solving murders. <laughs> yeah, where, he's where a, sports, are, a sports PI. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my guess is that they filmed, they filmed those scenes, but they were like, and that's the reason why they were late to the premiere because they only have uh, 20 minutes a of couple. actual... Agreed, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah I inferred that was They essentially the made it short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So so anyway, so with no, that, there's no possible way Perry's in on it. With that, with, well, with that point being said, yeah, you know what? I think I can, I can, I can probably see that he wasn't in on it just yeah. due to all the things that the, he said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, loved it. Thought it was great. Uh, I'm glad we were able to talk about it. Um, any specific scenes you guys want to call out? All the I don't have no specific scenes because they all were just <laughs> blend together. <laughs> I I really like the scene where the homophobic scene and oh, with oh really T- Tom Kenny the voice of yeah. SpongeBob yeah as the gay costume yeah like a, designer or whatever he excuses himself to the bathroom and he's wearing a goddamn thong <laughs> and then they have the hidden camera like in the corner of his trailer and yeah. he's just sitting there fuming <laughs> yeah wearing the thong yeah. i also like that just to piss him off as soon as he went into the dressing room tom kenny's character immediately opens the door and says, i was just i'm just sorry <laughs> i just wanted to apologize get out of my room <laughs> And then they break in with the other camera crew and they're like, Perry's getting a blowjob from the, from the, from the costume designer. He's like, yeah. no, I'm not. I, like, I, can't, I can't imagine having a friend like Mole. <laughs> yeah. God, that guy's the worst. But he's doing, he's obviously doing it on, on purpose. Everybody's doing it on purpose. And then the whole bat situation, like, why is the red bat there? <laughs> why do we need the red bat? And he's, they like set it up. So he's like, he's not listening to yeah. the directions. And then he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. All right, don't make sure you don't grab. And he's like interrupting them the yeah. whole time. <laughs> And he, obviously he grabs the wrong bat. And then even in the, like the post movie, like they're all at his apartment the viewing party and like, they're trying to gaslight him into thinking that he's the reason the food fell over. Oh yeah, you're right. He yes. was. And he's like, he's like, here it comes. We wind it. Here it comes. Here it comes. And he jumps in his way every time that, <laughs> every look, time, look, you knocked it over right here. And they, and they just, he keeps doing that over and over again just to really, and then he starts believing they're like, maybe I did knock it over. <laughs> See, that that's that's fucked up. That part's fucked up. Once you get into the gaslighting and you're like manipulating his brain, yeah. I feel like that's a little bit crossing the line. Yeah. But I, I'd say if if I'm going to like... Makes te- for good content though. That's true. If I'm if I'm going to be telling talking to people about this or like recommending it to people, I usually show them the the food scene, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the table, because it's in perfectly encapsulated. <laughs> Number one, you have Bobcat Goldthwait as the director in the, the uh, writing the- pants. Yes. With the microphone, <laughs> always talking. Always to the microphone. <laughs> he doesn't say. I don't say action. I just say act and, and act. act. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> ridiculous. And then the name of the backer of the movie is Hiroshima Nagasaki. Oh god! And that yeah. doesn't throw him off at all. Also, yeah. the historical figure name Susan oh, yeah. B, Susan B. Anthony. Yeah, the girl and John, John, Quincy John, John Quincy Adams is who, the, who who's is, the financer who is voiced by Mole Tony Barbieri. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. That's why he has to leave the room every time he's on the phone with him. Oh, I didn't even recognize that. Yeah, yeah, they're, he's, yeah Mole, uh, get out of here. No one, we don't want you here. You 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 and uh, Perry's fight. I don't want him to come through on the phone. Yeah, we don't want you to start any drama. So he leaves the room, and then it's like, JQ Adams here. <laughs> it's got like that that like transatlantic British accent. Yeah. <laughs> Same yeah. voice for the character of Nigel on Crank Anchors. Oh, really? He's mm. the British guy that I think goes. Have you seen the the clip? Oh, I don't. You ever seen that one before? I don't think so. It's a whole bit about the the guy is actually very funny. I think that Mole is probably his least. His least enjoyable character. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's supposed to be very obnoxious. <clears throat> I fucking hate Mole. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I felt so bad for <laughs> Perry. Because you could tell, like, he, he was just seething every time. And they make him drink the fucking pizza mil- oh milkshake God. twice. Oh, my God. That, and then he's lactose intolerant. <laughs> and he's, I'll do it. No problem. And then, and then they're like, all right, let's go to lunch, everybody. He's like, I don't want lunch. I had a good lunch. I had a big lunch. <laughs> oh. The fact that was the funniest <laughs> part is that they made him not do it once but twice. Yeah. And they drink he drinks the whole thing. And he drinks the It's whole- not like a small it's what funny, is like it? it's like a raw egg, beer, 
Chow mein, banana, pizza, yeah, pizza. Chow mein, pizza. pizza. <laughs> oh my fucking it's an end of days God. smoothie. Yeah, yeah without, end, without end, the uh, Pepto Bismol. End of days uh, protein shake. Yeah, <laughs> he, and it's funny because he, he he knows that in the script he has to drink the whole thing, but he makes it huge. Yeah. It's not it's not like he broke off a piece of the pizza and put it in there. It's the no, whole. It's like a the whole thing. three quarters of a gallon of gunk in there. And the first <laughs> instance of like his commitment to that is. The first scene that they shoot, but they get the manure in. And then oh yeah, throw them in the dumpsters. Like it's not it, Bobcat's. Like it's not dirty enough. It's not believable. We need some like we need some like crap, crap and, and poop. poop. Let's, let's actually yeah, let's get that. Let's, <laughs> get, let's get, get crap and poop. Yeah, let's get both. And he's like at first Perry's like I don't I don't want to do that. But then he like he's and then he like is c- commits to it. Yeah, and he's just and they just pour. I assume it was actual manure. It looked like real yeah. manure, yeah. Because it looked like soil. There's <laughs> water in it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's like, it's not wet enough. <laughs> Get it yeah. wet. We want Perry to be dripping wet. And then they do. Then they, he asked for the stunt double. Oh, which yeah. Set, which sets up the sex scene. Yeah. yeah. The stunt double and the sex scene. That was great because they make him think that they had actual sex. <laughs> which, again, no one would think that they're actually having penetrative sex on set. Yeah. For, <laughs> for a not porn movie. Yeah. I don't know. Tyler thinks that sometimes when we're like, I what? think I think Dennis Quaid was actually drunk on set. Oh, I'm, pr- I, I'm no, pretty sure. he was. He was. I think See? He exactly. My point. <laughs> You're making my was. point for me. <laughs> My favorite bit of the of the <laughs> whole. I put the snakes in my house. <laughs> my favorite bit of this whole movie was the personal assistant always trying to give him oh, food. food yeah. Burt Ward. <laughs> Burt Ward. Yeah, the guy who played Robin. <laughs> yeah, in the original Batman series, <laughs> he'd always come up. He's like, with a plate. he's like, I'm not. He kept saying, I'm not hungry. Yeah. I'm not hungry. Well, the shot of him like standing far away with a <laughs> yeah, plate, yeah, yeah. and standing. he's just like waiting. Oh, you want you want now? Just <laughs> gesticulating towards him. Yeah. Should I come? And he's like, No, stay right there. Stay right there. And, and then the, Mole always taking the food. <laughs> yeah. Like, at, like at, taking it from him. I like, and I also like the scene where he has a conversation with the personal assistant, and he said, You know what? If I want food, I'm gonna ask you or something like that. And he has the headset in, and he's, and then he just. Puts his <laughs> closer. No, I don't want food. Oh, sorry. I had an ear replacement surgery. I can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't hear because of this <laughs> yeah. headphones. And he goes, what about the other ear? I had ear replacement surgery. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, man. I, it's just, there's, there's a great bit about uh, their rider, you know, their demands basically for the food backstage. Oh, yeah. The, the motorcycle. <laughs> he, has, <laughs> he has the, the accountant for the fresh fruits, fresh berries, things like that. And he, the guy goes, <clears throat> the other guys, the other guys. Yeah, let's, yeah. Keep the, let's keep the list low. Don, Don and, yeah, Don and Mole, their lists were pr- pretty reasonable. They're pretty small. So you might want to keep a little, we don't want to, <laughs> then get pissed off that you're getting more. Yeah. yeah, he says shampoo. Yeah, shampoo and conditioner. Yeah, shampoo. <laughs> then it immediately cuts to them outside and Don pulls up on a motorcycle and goes, look at my motorcycle. I put it in my rider. Yeah. <laughs> what did, that was Mole. What did Don have? Oh, a Rolex. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah Rolex. a Rolex. Oh, Perry just asked for get? shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way, he, like he like gets frustrated at people though is just so hilarious because everyone keeps like barging into his trailer or like they just like come into there and he's like, get out of my trailer, get out of my trailer, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he's got a great scream. <laughs> yeah, it's it was so, oh my god, this movie had me in stitches. It was uh, so a lot, funny. A lot of great throwaway lines too. When they see Adam Carolla, he says he's on his way to. Uh, what is it, Passion of the Christ 2 or something like that? No, it was, what you're thinking of is about the Jews and Nazis, the Jew prisoners and the Nazis no, 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 playing that's a, basketball. That's a, that's a different scene. That was Schindler's List That too. was Schindler's List too, but there's also... Carolla, he was, he was, he had a dog with him and he was going on set to, for a, oh, yeah, it was a like, gladiator buddy cop. It was, yeah, and it was called Air Caligula or something <laughs> yes. like that. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of great. And like, he gets offended that he brings up the Man Show. Oh yeah, because he just lost the Man Show. Yeah, because he just lost. <laughs> yeah, I just watched Man Show last night. That's uh, it's great. I'm not on it anymore though, Perry. So, <laughs> yeah, like opening a new wound. <laughs> um, yeah. What else? Oh, he's uh, his like feud with Carson Daly was pretty good. Oh yeah, uh, like, he's a pussy. Yeah. yeah, that guy needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> that guy needs to die. <laughs> I just I I love and I love the way that they introduced him to because he dresses exactly yeah, like it's, him. It's, oh, he dresses like that? <laughs> oh yeah, because he was doing he was going for the part of Stone Fury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's how Stone dresses because that's how Ter- Perry dresses. Yeah. And then the 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 refrigerator scene was great as well. Just like this huge hunk of a man mm-hmm. coming in 
And he's like, Stone, they stole my they stole my refrigerator. How much of food? <laughs> there is one moment where he talks about being homophobic, mm-hmm. which is not the easiest to watch in modern climate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Drop some slurs and then yeah. and then he says in real life that he is actually homosexual or uh, homophobic and then he drops very casually that he Jack, oh, Jack, Jack yeah. Doff, a producer, yeah. and got a blowjob from a producer. It the, it's not the first time he that happened dick, to I, me. I gave him a handjob. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's actually in his Wikipedia. In, <laughs> in 1992, he says he was coerced into giving a handjob to a casting director. Oh, God. Who, in turn, gave fellatio to Paravello. Yeah, that's that, uh, that's 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 so I, weird. So, that, that's unfortunate. That's really that's really I know, sad. that's a shame. So That's really sad. Now, question is, hmm. is Perry homophobic in real life? Well, let me answer that for you right now. <clears throat> oh, okay. In 2020, the year of our Lord, where Donald Trump became our uh, president, mm-hmm. in that uh, election... Who do you vote for? <laughs> in that election, no, Perry ran for president. Of, um, in May of 2019, on the episode of Simply Don the Podcast, which is Don Paris, Don Barris's podcast, mm-hmm. he revealed that Perry would be running for president in the United States. Caravello stated he would run as an independent on a platform to that includes abolishing money, uh, building okay. a wall from Canada, uh, the Canada-United States border... The Northern Wall. Okay. The <laughs> Northern Wall. Uh, free healthcare. So there's oh, that. There we go. Oh, Legalizing right. marijuana. Okay. And also that he support, supported abolishing gay marriage, and cr- criminalizing homosexuality, and he would probably turn San Clemente Island into a gay prison. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Damn. That was his, those were his tenets that he was going to run on. Oh so. my God. Okay. Yeah. Well, with this context, yeah, I don't think he was going to win it. <laughs> Well, because Don Barris even said that has countered his his uh, declaration of that he was in on that it. He was that he said he was in on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, I'm, I'm no. telling you, you if if you may, felt like your friends made a fool out of you, and you think everybody's laughing at this guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, I was totally in on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It was but a great I'm not. Time. I'm not stupid though. This guy seems like he's <laughs> really just, <laughs> just uh, shut up. I only <laughs> there's only very small parts of Perry that remind me of you. Just very part the gullibility a little bit. Gullibility. I feel like we can strong arm you into doing anything. Yeah, you could. <laughs> you kind of you kind of fall for sarcasm a little bit. You don't think it's sarcasm? Am I being sarcastic? Uh, well, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe to a, a little bit of a degree, I, I do. And I, and I'll say it's just just a very small amount because Perry is like an eleven, and you're like a four. On that four, on the, four. On, on the wild card scale. Wow. Okay, well, Perry's Perry's off the charts. Outrageous, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know me. I like to go wild. Hey, look at me. This is this is normal. <laughs> but uh, okay, well, I mean, with that context, it's okay. Yeah, no, he probably wasn't in on it. Like, it, it's it's. Uh, you think he may be on the spectrum or something? That's what I thought. Would it surprise you to know that Joseph and I made up all that information? What? No. No, 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 he did not. Okay, I was going to be like, no way. <laughs> I got parried. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, the, 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 I pontificated that maybe he was, but I don't like, I don't like to just diagnose just people, think that about people who just seem weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it, of course it, not. It's, but... It, Cause it just, but at the same time, when he's, when he's wearing, when he's wearing that shirt and he's in, uh, this isn't the, the post movie. I like, think the which, shirt's slightly different. It's like well, a rotating cast of. Shirts. But I'm saying he's wearing sh- like a t-shirt and it's tucked into these jean shorts that are like almost capri length, mm-hmm. and they're, they're jorts. And he's wearing these like New Balances type sneakers, and he's yeah. got the white socks. I don't know. It just this is just you're just describing. Maybe the, this is 06. This you're is you're describing 06. like a 50 year old dad. This is like most men, <laughs> but and he's got the hair that he has and the way yeah. that he reacts to himself because he's laughing at himself. He's enjoying himself the most, right? When he's watching the rewatching the movie, <laughs> he he's also in shock that he gets women at all because he says, "I don't know how I do it, but I always have women." <laughs> and they're like, "He's, I'm just as surprised as you guys are." <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, like I, I think, yeah, I don't think he was aware. I think he's so full of himself mm. now, just based on this information that I just learned, is that he's so full of himself that he really truly believed like that he was going to be the next big thing yeah in some ways he did well but... because even the pictures of the people who auditioned like bruce willis <laughs> <laughs> i know like i'm better i'm better than bruce willis for an action movie or, or, or what was it? yeah it was like a action it's like a noir yeah 
Yeah, I don't even know what's and, and plus, you know what it tipped me off too is they're like, oh yeah, you're gonna play a sports PI. I'm just like a sports PI. What the fuck does that mean? A sports <laughs> yeah. PI. It's like a pet detective. Yeah, for sports. <laughs> but for sports. Yeah. And then once the the I guess the adult film producer shows up as the oh, new, yeah. what the was new his, financier. What was his name? So that character, <laughs> the actor, his name is Tom Stern, and he's a he. Remember that Alex Winters movie, Freaked? Oh yeah. He directed mm. Freaked. No, oh, did he? That, oh, that, that actual actor. Mm. Wow. He also directed, uh, let's see here, do, 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 Taste the Pain by Red Hot Chili Peppers music video. Oh. Mm. A bunch of cranky anchors, Jimmy Kimmel Live TV series. So it's like the same crew. The Man like, Show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 16 episodes of the Andy Mil- Milanakis show. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just... And then like when he shows up and then they just put the, the I guess the porn star in the scene, it's, she's just mm-hmm. there. Looking she's hot. just looking hot. <laughs> yeah, she's just sitting there. <laughs> and they take over his trailer and they make it think that they're having sex in his trailer. I think I really... And Charlton Heston as, is a not... It's not actually him, but like that he's a person in the movie. I like how he like took like the Spanish fly and he's like... Yeah. like I was thinking, this is going to get me rock hard. This is going to get me rock hard in like just a few seconds. And then... Uh, <laughs> She just touches me. It's, I that, hard. it's that fast. Yeah. It's that fast. And then when I'm about to have the hardest boner right now. <laughs> and then when they're about to have sex, they're like, cut. And he's looking around. He's okay. Stunts. We need stunts. <laughs> Get stunts. Uh, yeah. No, I wanted to do that. <clears throat> yeah. That was so funny. I know. And then like the, the obviously f- fake boobed actress, like obviously. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very, it was very obvious. But he was like, so like flabbergasted when he saw her <laughs> oh yeah he was he was getting a little a little rapey yeah <laughs> he's a little bit of a creep yeah, yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah he does give off a little bit of a creepy vibe for sure not based on the way he looks but just like his the behavior. way he reacts around the, women his behavior towards women definitely very creepy um yeah so i don't I have can come three <laughs> times within five minutes <laughs> impressive very good i'm trying to think if there's anything any other big set pieces that kind of reminded me of anything i I was disappointed that there was, by the end of the actual movie, that there was no reveal from, like, Bobcat. Oh, and yeah. by the way, this it's was not break. real. Yeah. And everybody's like, yeah. 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 Actually, you know what? That's a great point, because I, 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 I was waiting for that reveal. So. It was, yeah, it was not like... <laughs> It, it, nice. We did it, guys. Yeah. We made the movie with Perry in it. Yeah. Just to... Just to the the coordination they had to do to get him to not realize it was a like a prank the whole time was that 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 was a Herculean task I'm assuming. Because I'm curious as to how they filmed this, like how long it took. Were they filming every day, or was it like over a period of months? I imagine they probably did it over the course of a couple of weeks. Yeah, it doesn't seem. It seems like a pretty straightforward production because it's not like you're doing multiple takes on it, anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I figure they probably just shot many other scenes that didn't turn out as funny. Right, there yeah. wasn't enough funny stuff in there to put those scenes in it. <clears throat> yeah, in the final product of the movie, but yeah, it was a what, what was it like ninety minutes? That's, that's a lot of that's a lot of time to. Yeah, it, was, it reminded me of like if, I wonder if if this wasn't a thing if we would have something like Nathan for you because it's not necessarily it's not a prank show but those. We are they are the jokes those business right. owners for yeah. sure and it's obviously a ridiculous marketing scheme that yeah. nathan fielder is coming up with to promote whatever business and yeah. it's just like, so let's let's we're gonna create the doink it yeah and you're gonna and if you don't <laughs> and if and if we're marketing towards kids and we don't want kids to feel like they're babies yeah <laughs> it, what's the worst thing a, a, a big kid can think of that the other people think that they're a baby yeah <laughs> And you're a baby if you don't have a doink it. Yeah. <laughs> this this was, to me, the kind of the foundation of all that sort of humor came from the Tom Green show, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved the Tom Green show. It was, it was so different than anything at the time. Yeah. And it was on the streets comedy. And then you evolve into something like this, Windy City Heat. And then you have Nathan For You. You have Borat. You have the Ali G show before that, obviously. Yeah. <clears throat> Eric Andre. And then Eric Andre. Yeah. Which is like the insane vert. It's like, if you didn't think, I, I didn't think the Tom Green show could get much more 
ridiculous, yeah. but mm-hmm. Eric Andre took like, like the psycho energy up ten notches. Yeah, yeah, and and it was believable by the public. It, it's crazy what people will <laughs> accept in their own reality. Well, like, even the the guests that go on the show. Yeah, yeah, that's in, that's the insane part of the most insane part of the Eric Andre. I feel show. like there's no way that they he can get new guests now without them thinking every season. I'm like, how do they get these people? They know what they're they, getting into. Yeah, don't they know about? Well, them? now they do now. So they probably would just roll along with the bit, but. Like some of the, them are clearly there knowing what's up. Like Tyler, yeah. the creator, he knew it was up. Yeah, yeah. he played along with it. He knew. It. <clears throat> but then, but then you get uh, Jeanette McCurdy. Um, when she went on there, she did not know what she was walking herself into. Didn't he get Stacy Dash too at some point? Yeah, and you're like, who the f- who's publicist is just like, yeah, it's a talk show. I'm yeah. not gonna look up any. I oh, have Lance the- Reddick on there too. Oh yeah, Lance or Reddick. maybe or maybe it's like the publicist is like like pulling a prank on them. Just like, yeah, I know what this show is about. Yeah, go on, it's great. It's very well revered. That's that's a big. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big risk to take with your client. Yeah, yeah, it putting is. on the Eric Andre show to get to put tasers in the seat to shock the guests. <laughs> they should get. Uh, oh yeah, that's what Jack Black. He he kept getting shot. <laughs> they should get a uh, Corey Feldman. On. Oh like, God, he would love it. Oh, is yeah. he still alive? <clears throat> he's still performing. I mean, he's still alive. I yeah, didn't know. Yeah. I thought he was dead. No, that's Corey, Corey Haim. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, Scary Perry. He's a phenomenon. Another small bit of trivia, which a lot of this trivia, it's like it's impossible to substantiate. Sure. Also, <laughs> on Wikipedia. Yeah, exactly. But uh, this is Perry editing his own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Doctor Drew of Adam and Adam and Drew from mm-hmm. he claims that he was told by Comedy Central executive that they had to stop re-airing the movie over fear of legal issues with the Americans with Disability Acts <laughs> due to the fact the movie's making fun of someone with brain trauma. Oh, and like, again, it just really toes the line of <laughs> is this okay to laugh at? He's still aware of the decisions that he's making. Yeah, it's not no, like he's completely he's, innocent. Yeah, he's, yeah, no. he, yeah, he's not completely lost. <laughs> it probably helps that he's not that likable of a person. Like yeah. he's he's charismatic. Like you're you're drawn to him, just right. almost just like watching a train wreck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but it's not like he's a humanitarian feeding the homeless. He's talking about how he hates gay people yeah. <laughs> yeah. and girls was, with big jugs. Yeah. yeah. So you want to go give it your grades and wrap it up, Tyler? Yeah, I give this a A minus. I think it was just it was just such a funny movie. Like I I hadn't had a good laugh like that in months. So yeah, it was great. It was great. A minus. A minus. Okay, Joseph, how about you? Yeah, I think A <laughs> minus. Minus for the lack of big show that they didn't make out of revealing the mm-hmm. whole thing. Mm-hmm. I just wish they had that. But uh, but it was still really funny. One of the more like unique movies. It's a concept that you would only see in a show. Mm-hmm. To, and to, to make a movie about it, it's like a documentary type movie, I guess, Yeah, is pretty good, pretty unique. And uh, yeah, it was super funny. His, just his reactions. And he's such a kind of a crack, kind of a, kind of a, scumbag yeah he's kind of yeah. a, kind of a piece of shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it's it's i feel like it's okay to laugh at him yeah but yeah a minus all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go this is a probably a b mm. i think that it's more more effort being put into and i hate to, like none of it's bad particularly but there's there's some lulls in the movie that kind of leave me wanting a, a like a couple more bits mm-hmm. a couple right. more, a couple more yeah. like insane moments a couple more insane reactions from him yeah mm-hmm. the parts that i like the most are when you're just seeing perry like i've been in situations where they're all supposed to go to the premiere mm-hmm. and he's waiting for his friends to get ready. We have to be there at seven thirty. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're, he's like yelling at them and he wants to get out the door. And I've been in those situations before. I'm like, I gotta be on time to this. And they're like, hold on. I'm almost, I'm almost done. Let me get, grab some cup of noodles. Um, <laughs> and you're like, I would, le- le- I would leave. <laughs> yeah. We don't have time for the cup of noodles. And they put putting him in those oh, situations. And the phone being off the chat. Oh yeah, uh, I didn't want anybody to call here. So when we needed to get the other call, <laughs> yeah. And then the guy who the guy who's the limo driver, he he plays. He's the act, same actor that plays Doofy from Scary Movie. Oh, oh yeah. is that right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the same guy. I didn't recognize him. And the, they stop at the liquor store. There's like the Indian, <laughs> the Indian fa- twins. He brings in the daughters, and they're trying to get him to kiss. <laughs> and it's like, you're like, what is? This? Just we don't goes, have time for this. It goes so far <laughs> off the rails, and it's like Perry melting in his skin. <laughs> that part is so funny. But anyways, 
<laughs> yeah, the B, the treasure. People should watch it. And oh, definitely. I'm going to have the YouTube links because there's some a couple of really high quality uploads on YouTube. Yeah. In the show notes for this video, this episode. So, so that's it. Now it's time for the Wheel of Destiny. One wheel, eight slots, three hosts. This is the Wheel of Destiny. All right, Windy City heats off the wheel, and I already tipped my hand last week when we were had Javier on the, on the show. Oh yeah, that my pick is going to be Goodwill Hunting. Oh, Goodwill yeah. Hunting. So his name is Goodwill, huh? Yep, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Goodwill. Okay, love your store, <laughs> but the overhead's really low on it. <laughs> All right. So Goodwill Hunting is my pick. It's just a great movie that I haven't seen in a long time. Oh. That's why. That's why I'm picking it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, it's been on my like wheel choice list and for I've a never long time. Seen it. Oh, you haven't? You haven't seen it? Oh, How about you, Tyler? Yeah, I have seen it. I've seen it like a couple times. Oh, cool. I've seen the sequel. What's that one? Goodwill Hunting 2. <laughs> Will Hunting Strikes Back. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. Um, okay, cool. So let's recap the wheel um, for those watching on the YouTube for the first time. This is the Wheel of Destiny. And we got eight slots, as the theme song says. So they go. We- Goodwill Hunting from Pete. The Brave Little Toaster from Pete. Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Tyler. American History X from Tyler. Oppenheimer from Joseph. Charade from Joseph. A Very Long Engagement from Binge Lord Dan, a Patreon pick. And Fern Gully from Mackenzie, a Patreon pick. <clears throat> so we're going to give this a spin. Minor. Tyler, you want to call it? This is, yeah, the, this is the week. It. This is the week. I'm te- I'm feeling it now. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I can feel it in my balls. It's charade. <laughs> it's charade. <laughs> charade. It's charade. I almost thought it was gonna go on Oppenheimer, and I was gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> charade. Oh, what's wrong with Oppenheimer? It won like six Oscars or something. I, 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 he just has a, a unexplainable stance on not watching it. I just don't want to watch it. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. What a weird stance to have. I know. I don't yeah. want to watch it. Is it because of the bomb? Are you like protesting? No, no. I just don't want to watch it. No, I, just I don't like movies. <laughs> well, that much is true. Hell yeah. <laughs> so don't ask me why I put this on. Uh, it was a random pick from my uh, watch list on Letterboxd. It's a classic, apparently. Cary Grant, Audrey Hepburn starring uh, Walter Matthau, James Coburn, George Kennedy. Um, directed by a guy named Stanley Donan, written by Peter Stone. And the plot is, romance and suspense ensue in Paris as a woman is, is pursued by several men who want a, who want a fortune... <laughs> Her, who want to fortune her murdered husband had stolen. Oh, interesting. Whom can she trust? Okay. Streaming on Amazon Prime, BritBox, Roku, Hoopla, Britbox. Voodoo, Tubi, Canopy, Crackle, PureFlix, and Pluto. All right. Okay. Like everywhere. Very available. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, there's more. Classics, Shout TV, <laughs> Fandor, Freevee. <laughs> distro tv what the fuck is this <laughs> what is that so, this is uh sounds like something from australia distro tv yeah. it's rocking a 7.8 out of 10 on imdb so it's uh, interesting plot that sounds cool it's yeah. an oscar nominee for best music hmm. so oh, i guess we'll see <laughs> oh, oh great oh great wait I, it's not a, i'm not saying it's not a musical okay a critically approved movie a movie that's great <laughs> god damn Son it of a bitch <laughs> i have to watch a movie that's been declared good <laughs> now, since you have that, maybe you can watch a shitty movie and bring it to the the, the show. Well, if it's any good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Anything else, fellas? I uh, think that. Nope. It. All right. So, thank you to our cool ass yardies yard duties over on Patreon. That's Javier, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbett, and Chris. If you want to support us on the Patreon, hit us up at Patreon.com/slash Middle Class Film Class. All the links and all everything else is in the show notes. Until next time. Thank you to everyone in the YouTube live chat, in the YouTube videos, and everybody else in podcast land for following along. It means a lot. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mcfcpodcast, and send us an email, mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and follow us on Instagram at Middle Class Film Class, and uh, leave us a voicemail, if you please, at 209-730-6010. And follow us on Twitter at Podcast MCFC and on TikTok at Middle Class Film Class. That's right. Thanks for following us, everybody. We really appreciate the listens, the downloads of your time. 
It really means a lot. We'll see you next time. See ya. See ya. Get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.